This is a summary of the brachial plexus. We'll talk about the different parts of the brachial plexus, from the roots to the trunks to the divisions, and lastly, the cords and the nerves that are most familiar after the cords. And we'll briefly touch on the ultrasonic planes that can be used for nerve block of the brachial plexus. So first, the brachial plexus starts with the spinal roots C5 to T1, which you can see listed here. So this is the spinal cord on this side, and the extremity is going out in this direction. The hand will be somewhere on this side. So spinal roots C5 to T1 start here, and you'll also have minor contributions from C4 and T2, but that's less important to know about. The spinal roots turn into the three trunks of the brachial plexus, the superior trunk, the medial trunk, and the inferior trunk. The trunks then kind of combine and divide to form the divisions, which are not as important to know about. The divisions come together again to form the three cords of the brachial plexus. The three cords are labeled here, the lateral cord, the medial cord, and the posterior cord. These are all named in relation to the axillary artery, and the axillary artery is kind of the same as the subclavian artery, it just gets renamed as it courses down into the extremity. The three cords then turn into the nerves that we recognize in the wrist and in the hand. So the posterior cord becomes the radial nerve. That's shown down here. The radial nerve comes out of the posterior cord. The ulnar nerve comes out of the medial cord. So the medial cord is shown here, and you can see the ulnar nerve comes out of it there. The one that's a little tricky is the median nerve. It comes out of the medial and the lateral cords. So the medial and the lateral cords come together and it makes part of the median nerve. So those are the three big nerves that innervate the forearm, the hand, and the wrist.